Hi, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org, back with SiliconANGLE TV's live continuous coverage from HP Discover 2013 Las Vegas. It's the third day of the show. A lot of people are either out watching Santana or that uh, unfortunate loss in triple overtime of the Bruins to Chicago. So joining me for this segment is Cube alum and a friend of the Cube, Rob Crawford, VP of Sales from QLogic. Rob, welcome back. Good, thanks, Stu. Good to be back. Hey, so, uh, you know, at the show, uh, the, the attendance is about what it was last year. It's 11,000. Have to say the, the keynote this morning was a little bit lighter than expected. Some of it might be that people were out uh, here with a reshift, some people leaving a little bit early on there. Um, but, uh, you know, good energy at the show. And I've been seeing QLogic's logo around, not only your booth. Uh, good. Right next to us is the Connect Worldwide Group, and they've got, like, the NASCAR QLogic logo on the back of the shirt. So well, good. What's, what's QLogic's uh, presence at the show? What are you guys doing? So we got a big presence this year at the show as we always do. This is a big show for us and it is every year. Uh, HP, I think, as we've talked about before, is a big strategic business partner for us on a number of levels uh, and continues to be. So we, we show up every year. We typically have a pretty good showing here and uh, find it to be a great show, great time, time to interface both with HP and customers. Great. So uh, actually, I think back to one of the things we talked about in the past is people don't often think of QLogic as, as a switch company, um, but there, there's switch architectures that's inside uh, you know, HP's components, and I heard Dave Donatelli talking about it, you know, the Flex Fabric, the Virtual Connect, uh, that, that is some of the innovation that HP's shown uh, for some of their converged infrastructure built on QLogic technology. So, so the question I have for you is, uh, there was uh, some recent, uh, you know, workforce moves inside of QLogic, and the word on the street is that that had an effect on the switch group in QLogic. Can you give us the update as to what is QLogic's switch strategy and business? Yeah, so let's talk about our switch business in general first, because our switch business really is based on an embedded strategy. Most of our switch solutions are embedded with OEM partners in some way. So in some cases that's an ASIC, in some cases it's a module, in some cases it's a box. But you know these are embedded solutions that we sell through our OEM partners, and as part of that they're typically you know, there's a high level of integration that we do with their management framework, everything else. So that's kind of the nature of that business. And, uh, you know, I want to make sure that everybody understands we're still in the switch business, we're still committed to it. What was announced last week, which was, which was a big announcement for us, was a restructuring. And so we, uh, you know, historically have had, a, a, you know, business units inside our company. The idea is that we're consolidating those units together. We're going to get better efficiencies, both engineering, test, development, roadmap, everything that we're doing. We found that we were a bit fragmented, and the, you know, a big move was made to restructure and consolidate those units together. Yeah, um, I, I wonder if you could speak. So, in addition to that movement, there was the executive change. Uh, so, Simon is no longer CEO. We've got an interim CEO in place. That's right. Um, you know, talk to you guys a lot. You guys have your strategy in place. Just you know, really pushing the market with uh, your your fabric cash solution and flash. You yep. know, should people be expecting that QLogic is going to be making a pivot? You know, changing to new markets, or you know, is it uh, you know strategy going forward? You know. I think there's a bit of a, a view internally that this is a good time to double down on the business. And so, uh, you know, we are in the process of, of recruiting a new CEO for the company, we want a new leader. And the focus is really to get somebody that's a very strong technology, technology visionary, somebody that's got a strong technology vision for the company. A little different than where we had been, right? Because we feel like we're at a, a time when it's a good, good chance to double down. The company's financial health is phenomenal. We've got a lot of cash. We're in a good, strong position. And we think it's a good time to push some of the emerging technologies that we've brought to market a little faster, a little further. Uh, and that's a big part of what we're, what we're focused on today. Yeah, that, that's great. I mean, I, I'm not the financial analyst, but you know, I see profitability in the company. Yep. So guys are throwing off cash, which is a good thing. Uh, Flash, huge discussion uh, at all the shows I've been at recently. HP's got a good push here. Um, Give us an update on, on QLogic's position in the Flash marketplace. Uh, I'd, I'd like to know both from you know your, your new product that you brought to market as well. How does Flash impact the, kind of the, the whole portfolio of QLogic? So it, it's a good question, right? So, so you see a lot of SSD and Flash technology, you know, throughout the storage infrastructure today. So you've got server-side solutions, things like Fusion I/O and others. LSI has a solution there. You've got more network-based solutions or appliances that sit in the network, and then you've got the array-based solutions, stuff that sits in the array. And there's really a place for all three, depending on the application and the environment that you're deploying. What we do is different than any of that, right? So we actually have a server-side solution. So we take a standard HBA. And, and, and this is, uh, it's called FabricCache, I believe. FabricCache is the name of the technology. Right. So, so really what we do is we take a regular HBA infrastructure and we add SSD capability or cache technology to that, to that adapter. And so it's a cache-enabled adapter now. And there's, there's kind of two reasons why we think that's pretty compelling. Um, 
number one, it's, it's transparent in terms of how it fits in the infrastructure. So the driver that you use for a Fabricash adapter is the same driver you use for standard QLogic HPA. So you've got a shared driver and that cache becomes transparent in the way that it's deployed to the server. So to the server, it looks like an HBA. To the array, it looks like an HBA. But you just you get much better performance because you have the ability to cache data locally in the server close to the application where you get good acceleration. So that's number one, is this transparency thing. It goes in with a the unified driver that you're used to using for your HBAs today. The second thing that's pretty cool about it is that because it sits in a fabric of a SAN, so it sits as both an initiator and a target, it's able to participate in that SAN. So using that fabric of the SAN to share that cache between multiple servers. So we're able to cluster cache between servers using the SAN fabric as the interconnect. And so you're able to actually build clusters and, and uh, you know, configure these things together so that they're aware of each other and they work in conjunction to accelerate clustered applications, which is something that's been a big challenge for server-side uh, SSD technologies today. Yeah, Rob, it's one of those, I, I wish we had a whiteboard here. Or I, I've yeah. actually seen the product, so if you look at it, it, you know, you have that control point physically of where the host bus adapter really sits in the server, and you have that software that's reliable, it works with all of customers' applications right. today, and you're extending that capability so that it, it plugs into the sand. You guys aren't creating the sand, you, you're not becoming a flash vendor, you're still an I.O. controller That's uh, that, right, that yeah. works, and it then allows that you know, kind of single board to become clustered with other servers, really one of, one of the top challenges that we've had of server-based flash. Yep. Um, it's real interesting there. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about, 16 gigabit fiber channel. Yep. Um, I actually starting to see uh, you know, now end-to-end -end 16 gig available. Uh, Dell announced that they now have the compellent with the 16 gig on their storage array. Actually uses QLogic's chip, is my understanding, they do. on the array. Yep. And we had, um, I can't remember the product line, but it's the MSA yep. uh, product line here from HP now is 16 gig. Bring us up to speed, where is 16 gig adoption? Products are out there, are people actually using it? I, I heard something about the, the price of the optics is still kind of high. And, it is, and, and I think like any of these, there's kind of, if you look at the fiber channel business, the speed bumps, just like in any technology, you hit the speed bumps along the way. And you know these speed bumps involve a transition. So we went from four to eight, you learn lessons about how customers deploy that. And there's really a lot of variables. You've got a lot of infrastructure beyond just the HBA and the server. You've got switch technology, you've got the, the uh, target side on the arrays. All of this infrastructure needs to evolve kind of in conjunction. So typically what you'll see is you know, a little slow uptake and then it ramps quickly and then you'll see it you know, maintain that ramp through the, through the rest. But usually it's a three, four year cycle to go from one to another yeah. based on the, the change in the infrastructure. So we're seeing 16 gigs start to hit that up, upward part of that transition curve now. We're seeing good adoption. We've got 16 gig solutions that are now uh, actively in place with all the major OEMs, HP kind of leading the way on that. Uh, we see very, very high uh, adoption of QLogic technology on the target side. We've had very, very good success working with virtually every major storage player today because a lot of what we do with converged technology gives them the ability to have multi-protocol access with a single ASIC going into an array. So it's been very popular on that side. So what we see is that you know we're kind of hitting that uphill part of the ramp right now where it's transitioning faster. We look at take rates and you know I, th I think as we go through this the rest of this calendar year, we're going to see that continue to accelerate. Yeah, I, I guess one of the nuance that I, I at least heard from some of the field people is that even when the, the, the switches and the boards and the adapters are going in, a lot of times that's going to be an eight gig optic that's going in there. That's right. It's still a little bit cheaper. So yep. while you might have infrastructure that supports 16 gig, the amount of customers that are actually running at 16 gig speeds uh, aren't there. And of course, it, it's a, you know, the bottleneck in the system, the cost of the whole solution, it, it's yeah. a complex environment. So a lot of, you know, you, you phase in a deployment and a lot of people future-proof their architecture so that they can migrate there quickly you know, with, the, with transition of optics or something else when they get there. I, I think one of the things that's interesting about the fiber channel business, and we're obviously, you know, that's our big part of our business, we keep a very close eye on fiber channel, is that you know, one of the things that's exciting about fabric cache, not to run back to that, but is, is that that's, in a, that's, that's a step forward that's not just a speed bump, right? This is something that's really innovative that we're doing inside the fiber channel fabric that's going to improve performance, and it's not just a technical speed bump, it's kind of changing the paradigm of what you can do inside that fabric. All of a sudden I have the ability to actually use that fabric for things other than just transmitting storage data. We're actually using it for clustering, 
we're using really east-west traffic within switches, which currently doesn't get used a lot in the architectures today, to, to kind of optimize the whole use of the bandwidth of the fabric that's being deployed. So uh, we think that this is, you know, that there's multiple things that are moving forward on the fiber channel technology front. The use of cache, the ability to use clash, uh, cache on a server side is just one of those incremental technology uh, innovations that we think is going to be important. Okay, so so Rob, I'm, I'm sure you're meeting with a bunch of HP executives, and maybe you've talked to some customers here. Uh, any kind of success stories you could tell me about either how you're going to market or you know customer deployments that are you know doing something cool that you're hearing about at the show? Yeah, we're seeing a lot of interesting things happen right now, and I think what's happening in the market is uh, that there there were different thoughts about how the market was going to evolve two years ago. I think the which you know, market specifically? FCOE okay. things like that, right? So you, you look at convergence as a market. And I think as an industry, we looked at it as happening a certain way. We're actually seeing it evolve in a different way, probably. It's not that FCOE is not important, but its participation in a, in a typical storage fabric may be different than what we thought, what we thought it was going to be uh, a few years ago. And so, you know, I, I think one of the things that's really uh, important right now is this idea of flexibility in the architecture. It's one of the things that we've adopted and really been advocates for is this converged infrastructure is not about one protocol versus another, it's about flexibility, it's about being able to support multi-protocols within an environment, multiple you know, different types of fabrics and interconnect, and making all that work together and, and come together. And that's, that's typically what we see as being uh, the real benefit of the technology we bring to market. Today. Yeah, yeah, Rob, you know, I, I totally agree. Most customers that I talk to are not, you know, interested in the protocol wars anymore. Hopefully, we've gotten beyond that. One of the things Q Logic was helping to try to drive is uh, some of that convergence between, you know, so if it's fiber channel or if it's Ethernet, um, you know, the, the, there's solutions that can pull together. How real is that today? And uh, you know, how does that fit? Especially, I, I, HP was one of the leaders in in driving that. Not necessarily FCOE, which they have, but you know, they, Ethernet or fiber channel. Most of their products have, you know, both in there, and, and there's some flexibility there. And I think what you what you see a lot is that it's not that people aren't utilizing FCOE; it's they're using it in a portion of their fabric, right? So what we see is a lot of FCOE inside the rack. If I'm going from rack servers up to a top of rack switch, FCOE is a nice way to do that because I can do it with a converged, you know, single converged networking adapter in each of the servers, and then you 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 take FCOE and you transition to fiber channel from there into the rest of the director fabric of of your storage infrastructure. So we're seeing you know, pockets of this that are taken off and doing really well. Uh, and, and so I think people look at FCOE and say, gee, we don't see it on the storage side as much, but you may see it within Iraq. And that's, yeah, that's I, I, I guess so. so FCOE aside, what about the you know flexibility that you've got you know chipsets and, and products that can be either just fiber channel or any Ethernet, not necessarily FCOE. That's, you know that's kind of the flexibility we were talking about, right? So being being able to manage multiple protocols with a single ASIC is a really big deal, and that's you know that's one of the things that we've seen uh, as as a big attractor to the technology we're bringing to market today. It's one of the things that we have a lot of traction with HP on, as an example. You know, a lot of the things that they're doing in terms of you know innovating and offering flexibility to customers is based on the technology we bring to the table. Okay. Well, Rob Crawford, always appreciate you coming uh, to join us here in the Cube. Uh, Stu Miniman with Wikibon uh, here with Silicon Angles. Continuous coverage from HP Discover. Day three, going strong till at least 4:30. So uh, we'll be right back after this uh, brief break. Sounds good. Thanks.